Amen. Uh, praise God and good afternoon. I thank Osborne for introducing me. And I also thank the Lord who inspired the leaders to invite me to come and be with you this afternoon and share the word of God uh, with you. As I've been well introduced, I am Reverend Canon Dr. Livia Nasaka Banja. I served as the Director for Teaching and Learning, and not Admissions, an office that has now put to sleep after rationalization, but I was previously Dean of the Bishop Parker School of Divinity. And now in this year, I serve as Dean of the School of Education at Uganda Christian University. I'm happy to be with you this afternoon. I am a married woman uh, to Reverend Canon Moses Banja and the mother of many. And I'm glad to be with you. And most especially to share with you this afternoon on the theme Hope in a Hopeless Situation, which is based on Psalm 40 uh, reading that you just had from verse 1. Verse five, we'll begin with prayer. Blessed Father, I thank you and glorify your name because you are our Lord and King. I pray that you speak to us this afternoon and you silence all the voices of the evil one and help us Lord to focus on you. Rest your hope in all our hopeless situations and help us Lord to reflect on your word. Now, I would like, first of all, to thank uh, the ladies that have been sharing since uh, this week began. We uh, were set off by the Archbishop and we've been tackling the whole idea of hope. hope, hope all situations. Today, we are looking at hope the situation. Now, um, when we consider, uh, first of all, this text, uh, Psalm 40, I'd like us to understand that Psalm 40 introduces us um, to the word which is key there uh, in the first verse of the psalm and it is waiting. I waited patiently for the Lord. Now, that word waiting in Hebrew language uh, means or is the shall or which means patient, waiting, longing, so far disappointing, but still hoping and waiting. So, you have asked how does um, how does hope relate to waiting? We will from the word go understand that hope is part of the meaning which is key in this text of waiting in the Hebrew language, in which our Old Testament first book in French and in the world view is dropped. Now, just a little background, we will note that uh, these Psalms are attributed to David, King David. And in this Psalm, it is believed that it is placed in the context of David's experience of struggles and suffering caused by his enemies, an experience of God drawing him out of those troubles, victory over his enemies and the phrases that you do to God. Now, scholars, Old Testament scholars, um, try to explain the circumstances that maybe this psalm uh, came out of David's mind and worship and praise of God uh, after he had experienced a lot of 
uh, trying times, especially like you see in the book uh, of 1 Samuel chapter 30, where that war at the flag and the Amalekites uh, ransacked all his people and even carried away uh, his wives and the pain that he goes through. And also, it may be related to the, the time when David received the news about the death of Saul, which we see in 2 Samuel chapter 1, I read from verse 1 following. And so, scholars uh, think that maybe that is what would have caused this response. Because when you read in both, you see that um, the Amalekites had really humiliated and tortured um, David. While at the same time, um, Saul had pursued David right from his childhood. The moment Saul realized that David was a child who was forced to live, he started tormenting him. And that relief when, well, we don't see David singing and praising in open when Saul died, but we know that in that process, he also realized that the going of Saul was also a help for him for leadership and also overcoming the pain he had gone through um, all his useful life with the soul being out to maintain hunt him out. Now, we would now proceed, we would proceed to the, the text itself. Now, the text begins with the first verse, which says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Remember what I say, what the child means, waiting patiently. So you can see that even in this verse, we see that the element of hope Hope in a hopeless situation. We said that that long, long waiting period with some which may appear even disappointing experience that David may be talking about here. Patiently for the Lord, he turned to me and heard my cry. Now, David talks of waiting patiently for the Lord. And in this waiting, we see that the element of understanding and seeing that he waited diligently. And in the sense we say, waited with hope, diligently, honestly, patiently, and perseveringly, because it was painful. The example is of the, the, the abuse he suffered at the hands of the Amalekites. Uh, is one of that. And as we are in waiting in God to help him, so when you read uh, scholars like Basic, we really explain this in depth. David waited and called upon the Lord. And so, in this same, in this case, I would like at this time to um, encourage you, some of us who may be going through trying times of hopelessness to consider looking at what David did. People who hope in God wait patiently. We as Christians are called to wait patiently, diligently, honestly, and perseveringly. That is why in Psalm uh, 123, 123, David again says, as, as a slave looks and waits on the master, and as the maiden servant waits for their maid, their, for their the queen and all that, I will look to you until, until you have mercy on me. So that long waiting and diligence to wait upon the Lord is what David teaches us in this text. 
And we as Christians can also see that this kind of waiting on God, patiently, enduring in, in all circumstances, is what we see that comes even to our Lord Jesus Christ. Since he is born, God becomes man in the Lord, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a, a young man, he struggles, he's abused, but he patiently. On the Lord. Even a um, moment of his struggles to the cross, see his abuse, his toss is kicked around, but he even bears the pain on the cross. So that is what we have to learn from this, from the word for that we as Christians, followers um, of the, our God, the Almighty must learn from David, must learn even from the example we see our Lord Jesus Christ on the Lord. That's really we should never give up, even when it is so painful. I have seen many, many people who have been ill for a long time, but they've not rejected the Lord. They've not rejected God. You know, in the case of Job, some members came and said, deny God, and then you will die, you will die or leave. But he said, whether I go through this, I will not deny my God. So that patient waiting for God to come into your hopeless situation, what God is calling um, for us. Maybe the example we can also consider is for uh, expectant mothers. Nine months, you wait for this baby to come. And you wait patiently. Sometimes some mothers have to lie still on their beds for six months waiting for this baby to come out at the right time. And the pain, sometimes you won't eat, sometimes you can't sleep. Sometimes you have to do a lot of um, uh, treatments that are very, very painful. But you wait patiently and endure that pain through all that you felt. Uh, you health and then you believe and pray that when that nine months elapse, you will receive a bouncing baby. And your patients you have been paid. I know some young women don't want to wait for nine months. And for me, as a person who is involved in ministry uh, to children with disability, I have also seen the terrible consequences of uh, young women just choosing not to have their babies uh, be in the womb to come and the, the consequences of disability that babies suffer. So that tells us that even in the case of life coming, we need to have a lot of we need to have a lot of enduring hope and waiting upon God to give us the best. We need to learn to wait patiently upon the Lord in prayer. We should not run for quick fixes anyway. Many of us young people want to fix things, want to touch screens and things come out for us, want to uh, click mouse and everything. But in the Christian worldview, what we are encouraged to think and believe, for me, I am a Ugandan, we have a saying which says, for us Christians, we do not help God. We do not help God by running. That's why you hear at some point, God said to the children of Israel, when they had suffered, they, they are being chased coming out of Egypt. And he says, be still and stand. Now you have to endure the threats, the chariots, the army are coming, but God has said, Stand and be still. So you shouldn't keep running like the Baganda claim that divinities help you while you are running. We shouldn't run. We should allow God to work in our lives and to give us the grace. We should pray for the grace to wait upon God. We should not choose for our own ways of fixing and the challenges we are going through. God is our hope. And we trust in that hope. God is the controller of all the universe. In God is the beginning and in God is the end. 
Because God in our Lord Jesus Christ has already won the victory for us, and that is our confidence for waiting. Because in Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 to 15, it says, it says, having disarmed the powers and the authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. So we are thankful to God that the hopelessness we are struggling with has already been overcome by our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross as Paul. So in verse 1b, we also see David uh, testifying to how God, how he walked the journey of waiting patience. That hope, pressing on with that hope, he turned to me and heard my cry. Journey. In that journey, God turned to me. Now, in the Hebrew language, the turning actually relates to God bending over. So you can see a tall, huge person bending over a, a little one to rescue them, to comfort them. They be a grown up bending over a child. So God drew near to David when David cried because he had come down to comfort and restore hope. So God turned and had my cry, meaning that God came to rescue. And that is why in Exodus, uh, the children of Israel also say that God had their cry, came down. So that coming down, that bending, is what we see as the fruit of David's patience and enduring, enduring and holding on to the hope that God um, had. So we also have to learn to wait. Then God will come down. down. Like God came down and saved the children of Israel from Egypt. And God came down. He has already come down in the Lord Jesus Christ. So we have to trust that and live with that confidence. Now, in verse 2, we see that he lifted me out. David continues to explain. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mud. Now you can see a picture of uh, a child or yourself walking in a very dirty environment. Now, the, the image used here can be maybe relate to what people say, mud slinging. Sometimes our tormentors, mud slingers, and put us in hopeless situations. Hopeless situations that you cannot even explain. And so you are in, put in that deep ditch where you even become very, very hopeless. But David testifies that. God challenged all those circumstances, challenged his struggles that he was in and pulled him out of the pit and situations where evil people, evil circumstances had put him. And this is the Lord. This is our God. It's God who comes down and bends, comes and bends over and picks us out of the pit. You can imagine the kind of pits you've been going through. You can imagine the kind of trouble when many of us fell ill during COVID. Some of us grew up when we didn't have any parents, lost our parents and lived a life that was hopeless, but God bent over. <clears throat> and in that way, he pulled us out of those slimy pit, the dirty pit. Look at the dirty background where God pulled you out. And that calls you to give glory to God. And God set his foot on the rock and gave him a firm ground. That is in verse 2. He said, he gave me, he pulled me out of there and set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place. And, and this is what God, can actually be related to what God does in Jesus Christ. He came down. Who does something? Evil environment work out and to put us in the rock. 
So we seek on the rock, Jesus Christ. And overcome whatever comes our way. That our redemption is at hand. That is why we sing that on Christ, the solid rock, I say. So David um, was in that situation and so the goodness of the, the, Lord, the Lord God, the army, the strong pillar, the firm ground and the rock. For us Christians, it is our duty our duty to recognize the significance of God and his son Jesus Christ in our lives. He's our rock and the firm ground upon which we stand to respond to all those challenges that um, face us. In verse three, he again says, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Now, this is David's response. Many of us uh, relate to this experience. He put a new song because God's response, when he bent down and pulled me out of the pit, refers to overcoming all the challenges, restoration, and moving us forward in hope. God overcomes all our challenges if we wait patient. This is what we have to learn. If we wait patiently upon the Lord. Some of us married very late in life. For me, I committed my, my life to the Lord when I was just uh, 20 years. And I believed and I hoped that I would get married at one time. But I also trusted God that I should marry a, a man that is God fearing, that God will bring. For me, and I had to wait patiently up to 33 years before I get married. I know that there are so many younger people who are running out there saying that they have given, given up, they can't wait anymore. We have to wait on the Lord. We have to patiently believe that God is our strong, our firm foundation whose promise never change. Remember the promises God made to you when you committed your life to God, when he pulled you out of that eh, muddy ditch and the promises he made to you and stand firm. That is the testimony we are getting from mm -hmm. David. And I pray that many of our young, many of you young people really, who have committed your lives to God, stand firm on the rock and join in David's new song and burst in the song. Otherwise, if you don't wait, you will not sing the song of, of redemption. You will not sing the song of salvation. You will not be like Mary, because Mary coming out of the humiliation of a girl who gets herself pregnant before she's married, the truth dawns on her. And you see in Luke chapter one, verse 40, Verse 46 to 55, she sings a song because God has looked in on her with mercy, coming out of that terrible background. And that song was a song because it was a song of victory for the redemption of the world. Yes, the Savior is coming out of our womb. And that Savior is the reason why we can all sing and even come out on such a day and we come and worship the Lord and reflect on his goodness and even share his goodness with many out there. Now, in verse four, he says, blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. We are in a situation where there are so many things that people want to look to. There are so many human beings who claim to be small gods, who pose themselves and tower themselves above us when we are being challenged, when we are going through all sorts. When you are on the streets looking for jobs as a Christian, you may find this huge towering woman or man claiming to give you all that you need, and yet that will be the devil's agent. So what am I saying? We have 
to remember. We will be blessed if we wait upon the Lord and not look at the proud people and evil channels that are promising us just hell. It is a blessing to wait and hope and trust in God because we will never be put to shame. That is what um, David is reminding us. We will not be put to shame. There is idea of Christians who go to consult the diviners. People who go, they are these funny uh, people who masquerade as Christian prophetesses and offering all sorts, give me so much money, and I will tell you who is failing you in getting a job, who is failing your marriage. We should not turn to those kind of things because our hope is in God, trust in God, and we should not be discouraged as to go and lose our hope in the rock of our salvation, but hope in God who is, who has overcome and challenged all those false small gods, who has already challenged all those as we saw previously, because we are fighting a war that is already won by God. It is not a losing war. It is already won on the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ as Paul reminded us in Colossians 15. So I pray that we all stand and bask in this triumphant song. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and who does not look to the proud and to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, in verse five, many, O oh Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. These things you plan for us, no one can count to you. Where I to speak and tell them in too many. That is the final bursting to worship. And David worships the Lord, God, who overcomes for his wonders. This is our way of responding to God's word. Some of us have a very strange way of responding to God's documents. It's I've managed to get this PhD because I am a very intelligent and wise person. It was because I worked so hard. You see, for us in our family, we have a lot of money. My father left a lot of property. And you see, I am having this comfortable life. You see, for me, I am a very hardworking person. Forgetting what the Lord has done in your life. I pray that Christians, May always, we may always stand to testify to the goodness of God. And that is a statement of mission. Go out and tell what the Lord has done in your life. When you overcome, when God has overcome the hopeless situation in your life, it is a point for you to go out and tell of his goodness and tell many people to come to the Lord to share in this hope that is ever living to stand on the road that is ever. So it is my prayer that when the good Lord comes to us, we burst out in this song. Let us not worship any human being. Let us not praise our own wisdom. Let us not turn away from the goodness of the Lord and walk in our pride. It is sin for us to make ourselves small gods before God. Because God calls us to worship God. And there shall be no other God. We read in Exodus 20. The whole chapter there tells us how should we walk in as children of God. And God tells us, again, reminds us that we should only worship God, not ourselves. We should not become small gods. So it is my prayer that as we overcome the hopelessness that is hovering around the world, that God brings us into this hope and into the salvation, and that this enduring waiting brings success for us, brings victory in God. We should bust dust. And so we Christians see 
When the spirit of the Lord is within my heart, and we dance like David dance, we dance and tell the world that this is what the Lord God has done in my life. May the good Lord help us. May we remember. I pray that we remember that we have the patience. Wait. Wait patiently. We should never be hopeful because the battle is already won and the testimony we get is here and is with us. And many of us can testify to the Lord. We should keep waiting. We should look to the Lord. Look to the Lord. The Lord God will bend over us and bring us to Call upon the Lord and you will be That is what the Bible tells us. We should not cry in despair, even when we are deep down under there, like Daniel. We should and I think because our the law, the rock of our salvation and restore up in a situation. My prayer today. Who are walking in challenging situations, or if you're looking for a baby, you are married for years, maybe you're looking for a job, you have all your education, your family is certain, your children just don't live up to the expectation. It is hopeless. You are with this illness, it has bent you down. But today, the Lord is bending over and bringing you some. That embrace and hope. Example. Blessed Father, we glorify your name. I know that there are very many of us who are struggling with very many issues. We are working in hopeless situations. Some of us don't have the funds to look after our children. Some of us have broken families. We have been coming to you to pray. We have been struggling to make ends meet. We have been looking for jobs. Our studies have become a battle. Our work is no longer exciting. We are locked up in depression. But Lord, I pray that you who bent over David, you who taught David how to wait upon you patiently, diligently, as we are in all, we may also be given. If we wait, we deal with it as we are, so that we may burst in praise, because the battle is already won in your son Jesus. God bless you.